how God's service is always in order. Yes, sir. Yes. It never ceases me when we get up in the morning and you know that God is in control. Yes, it never ceases me when you know that starting from the time you leave out of your house and you pull up in this church parking lot and you go to your designated areas, and you start watching God just does what He do. And that's that overflow of His Spirit. Yeah. I want you all to do me a favor, if you don't mind. I'm just going to ask you just to listen to what I ask, and I'm just going to ask you to comply. I want you to take a minute just to close your eyes and just feel God breathing all over you. Just take that minute and just feel God breathing inside of you. Take that minute and just know that it is God and not you. Just take that minute and close your eyes and give God the holy praise. was a week that we truly knew a charge to keep our hands all right, all right. and a God to glorify. Amen. This week is a week that you all were amazed as well with what God has done with you. And as I was prepared for this Sunday, I asked the dear Almighty God, what is it that you want your people to have this week? All right. And he threw a spin into the midst of my request. He said, don't ask me what you want me to do this week, but ask me what you want me to do all the time. But not only that, he said that we are going to go on a journey this month, Antioch East Baptist Church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, breathe down on us. Dear Heavenly Father, speak through us. Dear Heavenly Father, remove us and find this one of your dwelling places. Lord, it has been asked. It has been heard. Our God, we believe this has been received and done. Because that's just who you are. All right. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm just so excited because Brother Mason is here today. He did not went to see Brother Mason for communion. And look what God has done. See, you don't understand if the times when God is giving you the mobility and giving you the mind to do what you need to do on a daily basis. And one day you wake up and then you don't have those same abilities. Then you realize that God just give me one more day to be in my right mind. Give me one more day to walk in your faith. And when God does that, we really learn how to appreciate our almighty God. Now I'm not going to take a lot of time up today, but I am going to praise God today. And I am going to let you know, thus saith the Lord. But before we go on, it is important for us to understand as the word is given, that we comprehend the word for what the word is. Don't be like the little boy when his cousin asked him at a wedding. He said, how many times can a man marry? The little boy quickly said 16 times. <laughs> he said, you can marry a woman 16 times? You marry 16 women? He said, yes, sir. You didn't hear the preacher? He said, for better and for worse, that's eight. Wow. Richer and for 
poor. That's eight. That's 16 times. A lot of times we hear God's word and we don't comprehend what God's word is really saying. We know one husband and one wife. But the little boy heard for better and for worse, for richer and for poor. Yeah, right. And he was smart enough in math to know that that equal to 16. All right. But this morning, the word I bring to you is clear, yeah. and it's promising. Right. And y'all, yeah, this month, we're going to do something different with the sermon. Right. This month, we're going to do a series right. in our sermon. Right. This month, and even if I give you the word, I'm going to tell you what it's going to be. Mission impossible, stumping fear, and marching in faith. That's going to be our series for this month. We're going to do the mission impossible. We're going to stop fear all out of us, only in the name of Jesus. And we're going to start marching in our faith. That's for this month. But in order for us to do that, would you go to Psalms 91? That's Psalms 91, verses 1 through 6. See how God works? I just heard one minister, I won't give their name. I won't give minister that for the name that said, I just read that this morning. But just let you know God is real. Yes, he is. Psalms 91, verse 1 through 6 reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the nonsense of pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Yes. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, yes. nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth noonday. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 You know, with the book of Psalms, and people often say, Psalms chapter 1, chapter 2, there's no chapters in Psalms. It is Psalms. But also, what's interesting about the book of Psalms is that we're in the fourth division here. Because the first division of Psalm is 1 through 41. Yeah. Second division, 42 to 73. Then we are where we are now with God, grace, and mercy. Yes. Yeah. We're looking at this fourth Psalm, that fourth division that brings us a peace. It brings us something to our mind that they don't know who the writer is of this particular song. They believe that it is Moses because Moses had the 90th son. And they said it has the same kind of flavor, so they assume that it is Moses here. And they assume that Moses wrote the ones they after, but when you get to the 95th son, David wrote that. So it destroys that thought. And it also says that in this particular psalm, they believe that there are three people speaking. They believe that one is the priest, the other one is one that is praying, and then there's God that is speaking. Yeah. But one thing about this psalm that we need, and it tells us here, and it talks about fear. And it tells us about the covenant of the Lord. I want to talk to you today before this particular day is about fear. We're going to work our way from fear. We're going to work our way to courage, commitment, and then we're going to find that we're marching in faith. Fear. Have 
you ever heard the word? It's a universal word. You can find that fear is something or someone that brings danger, threat unto someone. How many started out this weekend fear? Waiting for a doctor's report. And then God showed favor. How many this week was jingling their pocket and hoping that God would supply your need? How many of this week was just waiting to get a phone call from a child and say, Mama, Dad, I'm all right? How many of this week was just waiting to hear from God and say, God, you have given me what I have requested? How many of this week was just praying for a sister and a brother and say, Lord, if you can't do it for me, do it for them? How many of this week that said, Lord, I just want to be in the number? How many this week say, God, if you give me the strength to climb, I'm going to start climbing. Yeah. I got news for you. Fear has existed in every one of us. It had to be because the first time you ever hear about fear, you will find it in Genesis chapter 3, verses 10. When God in verse 9 had Began looking for Adam and said, Adam, Adam. where art thou? Uh-huh. And Adam said that I was hiding because I was afraid yeah. of my nakedness. Uh-huh. The first time we ever hear about fear. Mm-hmm. Can you be honest with me? Are you fearful about something? Yes. Right. You don't have to share with me, but are you fearful about something? Some are fearful because of the fact I have divorced and I don't know if I ever love again. I'm afraid to trust anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> there are those that are fearful because of the fact they don't know if their job is going to end tomorrow or not. They just got to go to work and find out. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. There are those that are fearful because of the fact that they have been playing with God and don't know. When God's going to strike, they say, God, if you give me another day, I'll get it right. But then you find yourself back into the same route or route that you say, Lord, here I am again. Yeah. I remember fear as I look at the years of my life. I remember when I transitioned from training wheels to the bike without wheels. <laughs> It's that thing that you can't wait to get out of those training wheels because you see all the other friends that are out of them. And then you know when those training wheels are released, you're going to have to fall sometimes in order to get it right. But yet you are still determined to ride that bike. But there's a little fear. It is said too with babies in order to make sure they have no fear about swimming, Start with their young form in the pool and watch them how quickly they adapt. You throw someone like me that, even though I swim, that if I did, you throw me in the water, there's a panic attack because of the fact I can relate. That's danger. There's fear in you because of the fact that it just exists. Yeah. But when we read this text, we read so often Psalms and we go through the words, but do we grasp the meaning of them? Yeah. Do you know when they talk about pestilence, they're talking about diseases? Do you know when they talk about the nose of pestilence, they're talking about this thing that annoys you, not noise, but sends off the smell? You know, fear brings about a smell too. Yeah. You say, what does it smell like? Better yet, we can tell you what it feels like. Fear causes your mind to run places where it shouldn't go. Fear tests you in the waters that you never treaded before. But there are a couple of things I want to talk to you in reference to fear. Three points. Fear is real. Make no doubt about it. It's real. All right. Also, fear contaminates the mind. Yeah. 
the body, yeah. the soul. Yeah. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is that fear has to be stopped. All right. <laughs> to spring into your greatness. How many of you all know in God's house that we and the of these Baptist church members, we have a beautiful church. Yes. Beautiful hearts in this church. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many of you are using the talents that God has given you to this fullest? Right. Right. How many of you are holding back because of the fact, out of sight, out of mind, and just do a little enough, just enough for God to just say, you're working in the church? <laughs> but how many of you all are giving what God truly has blessed you with? Right. Fear is real because. Fear causes you to be depressed. Amen. Fear causes you to be isolated. Amen. Fear causes you to tiptoe into a situation. Fear also causes you to be shackled of your greatness. I wonder when Sister kind of came to that mighty, and she began to sing that that mighty, how she got into the spirit and the choir. Join her and so did we. And she's saying to herself, okay, let me get this note right. Let me make sure I go to the level I'm supposed to go to. Make sure we come in with the right time. When you ask to do a particular task, how many of you all talk to yourselves before you even start the task? Yeah. How many of you talk yourself out of something instead of talking yourself into something? Yeah. How many of us find reasons for everything else but? <laughs> Who's afraid right now? <laughs> Who's afraid because of the fact we don't know when God is coming back? <laughs> Who's afraid that when he comes back, you're not ready? <laughs> with what God is doing with us. Right. Afraid that if we step forward, we just might fall. Come on. Come on. Who knows that fear is real? Boy. I'm watching our media and I'm seeing that it's giving us all the precaution about when you go into the gas pumps. How many are more fearful now when you go to the gas pump and you're scared? Or so many husbands are telling their wife, don't worry about it, baby, I have it. I will fill your tank up. All right. Amen. And those that are without spouse or significant others, what do you do when you get to your destination? Are you scanning everything around you because you're so fearful? Yeah. Because we see so much in the news today. In our scripture lesson today, we find that in our fears, we must acknowledge our truth. Yes. Fear is real, but you've got to acknowledge the truth that you're scared. You're scared sometimes of what is on its way, and you don't even have any idea of what it is. Yes. A lot of us live in fear because we're concerned about the next minute that we're not enjoying this present second. We must face our truth and realize that at times, Lord, when I don't depend on you and taking care of those fears, I depend on myself. And I take it out of your hands. We all have had those Peter moments. And knowing that fear is true. We say we can do this. We start trying to walk the water of whatever been given to us, and then we start finding ourselves sinking. Because we took our eyes off of God. Yes, yes, yes. You had a Peter moment. You had those moments of doubt. You had those moments where it is uneasy. But in the uneasy, in order for us to move forward, we got to remove our fears. Yeah. And in our minds, we realize, too, is that your fears are not your father's. Your fears are yours. 
We realize too with our God that we got to realize that our Lord, our Savior in grace, has us covered. When it talks about the fowlers of the air, that's speaking of a group of hunting birds that opt for their prey. When we read about the secret place of the Most High, even Jesus speaks in Matthews about he wished that people would come to him like a hen. But she protects her babies. But a lot of times we don't go to God because we even feel of going to God. And what causes that fear is because we haven't been thankful to God. We have not given God his devotional house. He don't even for four hours. He just said for a moment. How is your praises with God this morning? <coughs> Fear. All right. Is it in you today? Lord Jesus. I'm not speaking of just because I asked you is it in you. You know what's on your mind. You know what you're worried about. You know what you're asking God to do for you. You know you're just asking and saying God is going to come through like I thought it would. Yes. Also, you know that fear, too, that hunts you at night. Yes. The fear that hunts you in the day and at the noon, they are. Yes. But you find that in this particular psalm, you see where he has touched every basis mm. of your time with him. Morning, noon, and night. Right. Yes. And it speaks of a shield and a buckler. Right. We know what a shield is. But the buckler is everything else around you. That is protecting you. God has promised that. I have one thing I want to share with you before we get on with fear of contamination. And in 2 Kings 6 and 16, we remember Elijah with the Syrians and when they would come in to destroy Israel. And it was Elijah that prayed and asked God to help. It was him that said, please, Lord, help us. Whatever Elijah asked, God did. Yes, he, did. Yeah. he asked for them to see. They saw chariots and horses more than that was coming their way. Yeah. He said, God, can you make them blind? <laughs> they became blind. Because he had enough faith. But he was also a man, and he did fear to a certain extent, but he knew Go to. Yes. Who do you go to when you're scared? Well, well. We're gonna have to stop this devil up out of here. Yes. I said we got devil, and that's what we know the devil is lurking out here. Because he sees that any of y'all is living. He sees that when you come out of that door, he's just sitting on the bench waiting. In the midst of of all of us, he's out there. Yes, he is. But how do you handle dealing with him? No. Yes. The word tells us too, and he answered, fear not. Fear not. Mm -hmm. right. For they be with us are more than they that be with them. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't, I don't care what it looks like, he got us. He got us with the greatness that he's getting ready to do with us. Deacon Matt said we can be greater. And we are greater because we're heathens. But then I think about how fear can contaminate us. You know when you go to the doctor and they tell you to change your diet because it's affecting your glucose. Change your diet because of the hypertension. Change your diet because of potential with cancer cells. Because you don't want your body to be contaminated. But one thing we have to remember is that if our faith is contaminated, it affects our body, 
It affects our mind and it affects our spirit. Don't let the devil rob you of your joy with the Lord. Don't let him contaminate your mind to where you're not able to go forward because you're afraid because you said we can't do it. But the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That fear would come in and it would nestle in a place and it would start festering throughout you. It would change your attitude toward people. It would even change your attitude towards yourself. Hallelujah. Yeah. It would get inside of that body. That heart palpitation would be going so fast. Every time you turn around, you're worried. That's called fear. It would get in the spirit where you once knew love. You'd be too afraid to love anybody. Because you'll feel like everybody's out to get you. But we're God's children. Yeah. We believe in the Almighty God. Fear, it says also, we know, I don't mind is the devil's word. Ask David. Ask David when he was supposed to be on the battlefield. And David was somewhere he had no business being on that day. And his son would go out up on the top of the roof. And he started scanning the air to see what was up. And his eyes stopped in at one particular area. His eyes stopped in one particular area. And when it stopped and he looked around and he saw something that he had to have. See, the devil started getting busy. And David decided to get busy as well. But after the business was over, sin had taken all over. But then David began to become fearful. Because he knew what he had done was wrong. He began praying and doing everything else. And you know he had to be reminded by a prophet by going in somebody else's vineyard. Yeah. And he said, wherever that is, they should be killed. And he reminded him, I'm talking to you. Yeah. All of a sudden, David got fear. Uh -huh. right. Because of the fact yeah. here yeah. to become between him and God. Yeah. 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 In our lives, we find too, if we're not careful, our fear will cause us to miss them. Right. And what I mean by that, we will get in a situation that we got to pay the cost. Right. Ask Abraham when Abraham lied, not only once, mm -hmm. but twice about Sarah being his sister. Right. Yeah. Because he was trying to save his own life. Yeah. And he had to wrestle with that. Well, we either got to step up or sit down. We even got to make up our mind that we're going to stand strong. Yes, yes. Or we're going to let fear take away the blessing that God is trying to give us. Yeah. We're going to find ourselves in a place where we're going to say, God, you forgot all about me. Right. He's going to remind us that, no, you forgot to depend on me. Right. When we start dependence, God starts delivering. Yeah. Of human nature. We gotta realize that everything that is before us yes, are yes. always in God's hand and always this is beyond our understanding. Yes. Yes. The only thing we gotta realize is that we gotta invest ourselves in the Lord. Yes. A fearful man or a fearful woman won't know if they're coming or going. Right. They sometimes won't even know that they're here. <laughs> but is it not the word that tells us in the great book of 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. It didn't say that for you have 
given us. It doesn't say that I have given you. It says, but God has not given us. What God has given, no man can take them away. This morning, as we concentrate on that, is the 10th chapter, verse 28. And it says, fear not. <coughs> Them which kill the body. Right. Yeah. But not able to kill the soul. Yeah. Right. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both the body yeah. and the soul. Yeah. Right. And it lives with this in hell. Who can destroy your faith? Right. Who can destroy your spirit? Mm. Who can destroy you? Mm. All right. Yes. You say Satan can, but. He can only do it if you give it to him. Yes, yes. He can only do what you allow him to do in your life. I'm not saying he won't disrupt it. But you're the one that can allow him to corrupt it. Yes. You're the only one that can allow him to corrupt who you are. Yes, sir. We got to stop this fear out of us. We as a church body are standing on God's promise. We as a church body are believing in God's mighty word. I want to share someone with you about faith. In the martyr, the voices of the martyr, which I received, and I read the issue for March of 2017. It was one individual a Korean named Han Chung Royal, a missionary. In order for us to stop the fear out of us, we got to be able to be willing to go for it. Yeah. This one man that was a missionary in China, he was in Chan Bay, China. He and his wife, he was a young man. He decided to give his life to God, and he knew with the North Koreans, they were right on the border. Yes, yes. They were coming over into China, and they were helping these individuals. He was yes. a missionary, yes. teaching, yes. loving, All right. and trusting. All right. Word got out that this particular missionary was helping other Koreans that were coming over. And he trusted God enough. He said, I want to teach them and give to them not the gifts of South Korea, but I want to give them the gift of God. Yeah. And when I give them this gift, I want them to go back over to North Korea and share that gift with them. All right. Well, they said, I have to kill you. You're on the All hit right. list. Mm. Yeah. You're on the top of the hit list and that we are going to let you know that we're going to kill you. Right. He had a choice to allow fear to consume him. Yeah. Allow God to cover him. He chose for God to cover him. They said that he would have escorts when he was coming in and out. He would be covered. He was going and even with his wife they made sure that they would never left the church alone. But one particular day, he got a call. They said he left. And his wife knew something was wrong. She called the police and they responded and said that we just found his body. They had taken and cut one of his main arteries. They stabbed him directly in his heart. They said that he had seven incisions in his head to where they had stabbed him. And they said that was basically the MO for the North Korean spies. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he had gave someone the word of the Lord, and in return, they gave him something. Mm -hmm. But he did not allow for that to consume him. He trusted God. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to know sometime overstepping your fears may put you in a situation where you're either going to be with God or without God. In your situation that will cause you to do things you thought you wouldn't do because you're trusting God. And 
Today, I want to talk about a great stone. You got to tell yourself right now, Phil, you cannot have me. Phil, I don't belong to you. You got to say, Phil, you won't control me. You got to say, Phil, it is over. You got to tell yourself, even when my mind says that you're not going to make it, even when my mind says that the illness is still in the body, even when my mind tells me I'm going to come up on the shorter end, even when my mind tells me to move and don't wait on the Lord, yeah. you got to make up right now your mind yeah. that you're going to stand for the Lord. Yeah. Right now you got to release that fear that has yeah. tried to consume you for year after year. Yeah. you got to make up your mind and say, God, this is your mind. Get your breakthrough. Yes. 
I can tell you that God can give you all the money you want. I can tell you have the houses on top of the hill. Well, well. But I can't. But I can tell you God will give you everything. Everything that you need. All that you got to do is trust him. All that you got to do is make a call his name and say, God, I surrender all. Remember one thing. Our God said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not that the world that gives to you that I give. But He tells us, Do not let your heart be troubled. And let it not fear as well. Don't fear God. But fear God. Don't fear me in reference to coming to him, but fear him in reference to he's an almighty. He's all powerful. He's a breakthrough. He's a breakout. Yes. He's with you. So as you stand, I want you to remember one thing. He went to Calvary. And when he did, there was a time in Gethsemane. And he said, take this cup from me. I don't want it. But I gotta realize I gotta take it. And boy, they marched him from hall to hall. I wonder what fear was there. And then all night long they talked about him. They treated him any kind of way. Crown of thorns is all over him. Lashes for you and I. Yes. But then when they took him to Golgotha, well. the place of the skulls, yeah. and they nailed him, they thought victory was done. But he was reminding his disciples, don't fear, I'll be back again, I've already told you that. Oh, he had to go to bar too. And they said he lay there all day Friday night. Saturday night he was still there. But early, what's that? They went to look for him. And he wasn't there. Remember something, the disciples didn't fear him until he was gone. They didn't fear anything because remember they went to sleep on him while he was in the garden. And if they were fearful, they would have stayed awake. But they went to sleep because they knew they were with Jesus. But when he left, fear came all over and they started scattering. Yeah. Please, don't do it without Jesus. At this time, the doors of the church is open. They're open and I'm asking the choir. Follow Jesus. To follow It just means walking. And let him go. East Baptist Church all right, all right. seems impossible. All right, all right. Because we're a church. And in today's time, we're finding more and more that are straying away from the church. But any of East Baptist Church get ready for the mission impossible. Oh, get ready because today we stop. Fear out of us. Yeah. Don't come to me next week and tell me you're afraid because God is with us. Don't come next week and say, I'm afraid because God been speaking to me to get in the choir. Don't come to me and say you're afraid because God has told you to take 
A stand with the ushers. Just trust him. Hold him as he holds you. I'm going to ask that we all go ahead and stand. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to call on God's name. I know there are many that got on uh, hills and there are those that probably say I have a sore foot. If you got a sore foot, please don't do what I ask you to do. But I'm going to ask you one time. Just one time. And when you're going to do this now, don't try to be one that is so athletic that you can do this without a problem. I just want the devil to hear us when I say on the count of three, I want us to stop the devil up by the left. Will you do that for me? On the count of three, get your position. All right? And for those that cannot stop, take your hand and just pat with you. But Brother Harris already ready back there as an usher. On one, two, three, we're going to stop the devil out. A one, a two, and a three. Let's stop him up out of here. Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name.